So I wanted to ask you about uh, the difference, uh, the two processes that I'm sure you must go through. One is uh, quantitative, uh, where you're taking measurements or, or actually recording some metrics of some sort. And the other being qualitative, where at, you mentioned that earlier, you know, you have somebody sitting and listening through all the different audio tracks and making sure that they're good. And, and I, I'm also curious to know what are they looking for ob, uh, subjectively when they're looking at the, at this content 10, 20, 30, 40 times or whatever it is. Um, so I'd love for you to talk a little bit about objective um, versus subjective. Uh, quantitative, quantitative versus qualitative. Yeah, yeah. So from a, from a qualitative perspective, we're looking for um, whether it's 4K content, HD content, HDR. A lot of the qualitative issues are are, are similar. You're looking for macro blocking issues, uh, compression artifacts. You're looking for banding. You're looking for digital hits. Things that could have been the result of the encoding system. Things that could have been the result of a uh, file being copied over and a digital hit was uh, was introduced. Um, so those are the types of things we're looking for from a qualitative perspective in in the on the video side of things. You know, and on the audio, very similar types of is um, qualitative issues where we're listening for you know a pop, a tick, a level dropping in a, a channel or a level missing or a, a channel getting um, reversed. Um, from the more the objective, that's where we're looking at things like, you know, is it the correct codec if they have a requirement for the bit rate, making sure those are, are set correctly, making sure the video level is using a tectronic scope to make sure that they don't exceed certain levels. From the audio perspective, same thing, making sure the audio levels, you know, don't exceed a certain parameter based on a requirement that the, the studio, the content owner would have, uh, would have specified. So it is a combination of that visual, somebody's literally watching it, as well as putting it through different types of tools and scope to make sure um, it meets the, the requirements of, you know, whether it's the studio or the platform that it's going to be delivered to. How, man, I, I, I'm thinking about this and I'm, th I'm thinking about if I were one of those people who was sitting there watching this movie, say, uh, several times to make sure the audio is good and uh, so I have to listen to every track and I have to watch this movie a bunch of times. How do, how does that person avoid fatigue or, you know, just, you know, spacing out for a minute and missing a tick or something like, or, you know, some artifact that appears for a moment and then it's gone. But man, after the third or fourth or fifth time through this movie, you know, how can you keep your attention so focused? Yeah, and that's that's really great. We have a great team of, of of test engineers here, understanding the importance of every piece of content, you know, that that they watch. It's not about enjoying the movie. It's about looking for any type of issue within the content, within the audio, within the subtitles um, that could result in a, a bad user experience. Understanding that, you know, you wouldn't want to go home and take a look at a piece of content and all of a sudden a frame breaks up or there's some corruption or, or, or something to that effect. So it's just keeping in mind the ultimate goal to ensure that whatever it is you're looking at is the best possible quality for that consumer in the home, which, you know, it could be you, it could be a relative, it could be a friend. So just always being spot on, paying attention to what you're seeing, not so much obviously following the story, but really looking at those technical aspects to make sure that uh, everything's good. That would be another problem for me is, you know, if, one, if you're following the story, you're going to be less likely to catch any little glitch or something. UJ is asking the same thing. I'm curious how you train 140 people. It's not all 140 in your in your company, but you have some <laughs> some suite of people. How do you train them to be able to, to uphold the standards? I would think one one solution might be if you're going to have to go through a movie several times, let several people do it for different runs, right? So one person would do the English Atmos track and one person would do the Spanish two channel track or whatever. Uh, so that you don't have one person kind of just getting tired of the same content over and over again. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. We typically distribute the work across, you know, multiple uh, test engineers. And it's it's required because, as as I had mentioned, not only are we 
testing content for all of the different audio languages, the different subtitle languages. In many cases, you know, let's take a, a Blu-ray disc, for example, you might have three or four versions of that same title because they're being shipped out into different territories or something for one of the online platforms that might be going to, you know, 10 different countries um, with multiple languages. So uh, you know, for some of these projects, we could be looking at, you know, 15, 20 or more different audio streams and 30 or four different subtitles. So it, it's, re it's required for us to be able to distribute that work among, you know, multiple, multiple, you know, test engineers, especially being, you know, with the requirement of tr having to turn it around, you know, very quickly and allow the studios to, you know, remain within their production timelines, which are typically pretty tight.